So you want to start painting minis. Awesome. Let's dive into some tools that can help you along the way. Getting started with minis and painting is pretty easy and it can actually be as cheap as you want it to be. If I'm being 100% honest, if you are just starting off on the hobby and you're not quite sure if you really want to dive deep into it, going cheap is pretty much one of the easiest ways you can go. Before we dive too deep into this, just keep in mind that some of these tools you might not necessarily need to begin with. However, it is good to keep these in mind just in case if you might need them along the way, or of course, depending on the types of miniatures that you're working on, it can be very useful. With that, let's get started with some hobby clippers. Clippers can make the removal process very fast and easy as many models come in either plastic or resin. You clip these off the sprue and it can make sure that you do not damage the parts while you're clipping them off and getting ready, to, getting ready for assembly. The good news is that if you have some extra bits left over on the actual model parts, we'll be using another tool later on that can clean up all of these extra little scraps. Now I will admit I actually didn't have hobby clippers for almost an entire year when I was first starting off with painting. This is because I used a company called Reaper Miniatures and all of those are injection molded plastic and they really don't need to be clipped off anything because they are just sold individually as one piece. And since I started off with a lot of these miniatures, mostly for Dungeons and Dragons, I really didn't need clippers at first as I didn't really have to clip anything apart. The good news is clippers are actually very inexpensive. I actually got two pairs off Amazon for $12, one for myself and one for my wife, Altpox, who uses hers mostly for 3D printing. And while you don't necessarily need these clippers right away, I would still recommend considering getting them sooner rather than later, as a lot of miniatures do require them to have all your pieces so you can assemble the miniature. Now with clippers done, let's move on to the next tool, the hobby knife. The hobby knife, which most people would just call an X-Acto knife, is a very important tool that you can use to one, clean up all the extra bits of plastic from the models left over from the clippers from before, and also to clean up any mold lines and edges along your miniatures. With a simple scrape, you can remove them with relative ease. Now when using these knives, I would say move very slowly, only taking off a small bit of plastic with each pass. You can always go back and make a second pass and clip off a little bit more. I really cannot recommend going slowly enough and also being careful as these blades can actually be relatively sharp and you can cut yourself relatively easily. Again, when it comes to moving slowly, the last thing you really want to do is cut away too much and actually damage the model itself. I mean, not that I've ever done that or anything. Another use of the hobby knife is to remove mold lines, which can be seen on almost every miniature. With every plastic miniature and also some with resin, you're bound to get lines where molds are pressed together or where parts of the form meet up. The good news is you can always, almost always use the back of the knife. Plastic is soft enough that you don't really need to use the blade. So for mold lines, I would try using the back of the knife first and then moving on to the blade as needed. If there was one tool to get overall, excluding the brushes and paints, of course, it would definitely be the knife. It's a very useful tool and you can use it in the vast majority of circumstances. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the next tool that you'll need, glue. Glue is super important as the majority of miniatures on the market do not actually come assembled. So you need to find a way to stick them together. Again, since I started off with a lot of Reaper Bones miniatures, they were already assembled and put together, so I didn't need glue at first. However, depending on the game that you're playing, especially any type of war game related, such as Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Malifaux, King of Death, you name it, the miniatures come in different pieces, so you're gonna have to glue them together. There are two main types of glue that you can use, super glue and plastic glue. Both will work, but many painters tend to use super glue more often, and I happen to be one of them. Super glue is super common and very inexpensive to get a hold of. My wife and I use Bob Smith Industry Super Glue very frequently, and it can also be found in most hobby stores. Now, in addition to regular super glue, there are a few extra bits and tools you can potentially get to help out with the gluing process. First is a spray that is essentially an accelerant that can help the super glue dry even faster. Of course, you just have to make sure you are going as quickly as possible as the super glue with the accelerant dries up very quickly. Also, there is a type of unglue, undo. It's a chemical that helps undo super glue so you can get it unstuck from your fingers or different model parts. Again, these aren't necessarily required and I don't use them all that often, but it is something to keep in mind if you have the budget for it and also potentially want something a little bit different. Another form of glue is plastic glue. 
Different companies such as Games Workshop and also Tamiya sell plastic glue and the applicator is actually pretty great. However, it does, for me, take a little bit longer to dry and it's hard to correct mistakes because I believe it sort of melts or bonds the plastic together. As far as I know, that an unglue or an unstick solution does not necessarily work with plastic glue. Again, both work, but I personally prefer super glue as it's a little bit easier to work with, a lot more readily available, and it's a little bit more inexpensive. However, whatever glue you can get your hands on, whether it be plastic glue or super glue, I would go with that to start off with. Now, one of the next tools that you can potentially need is a pallet. Now, there are many different types of pallets out there, both wet pallets and hard pallets. And essentially, when you're first starting off, you can kind of get away with using either or. And yes, that also means a hard pallet to start off with. All right, all right, all right. Now, calm down. I understand that almost every miniature painter out there prefers the wet pallet, and I do as well. However, when you're first starting off, if you want to go the cheapest route possible, you can use a simple hard palette. I would not recommend using anything paper, like a paper plate, as eventually the paint can slowly seep into the plate and also cause tearing and holes, and also some of the paper can get mixed in with your paint. So we'll definitely use something a lot harder. When I first started off, I had this hard palette I got for around a dollar at Michael's. Would I go back to it now? Nope. But it also was a very good start. It is something that you can easily clean up, hold all your paint in a specific spot, and also it, you know, just works. I should also note that a hard palette makes mixing colors much harder and more difficult, so the sooner on you can get to a wet palette, the better. Of course, if you want to get started with a wet palette, you can either make your own, or there is one called the Masterson palette, which is around $10 on Amazon. This one here I have by Redgrass Games. I really like using it, but it's also a lot more expensive. In the end, use something to hold your paint, something that you can put it on, dip your brush into it, and then easily apply it to your miniatures. Again, when you're first starting off and you're going the cheapest route possible, most things will end up working out nicely. Now with my super hot take on palettes out of the way, let's move on to a type of handle. To make painting more comfortable, I would definitely recommend having some sort of handle to attach the miniature to. This can one, create less cramping in your hands as you're holding something more comfy, but also so that you do not have to worry about smudging up any paint that you've applied or even having any other issues with the paint uh, getting on your fingers or anywhere else on the model. The good news is you don't really need anything fancy. When I first started, I legitimately used a Dixie cup and some tape. I painted min many miniatures with this setup and it worked very well when I started off. Since I already had the materials ready, it didn't really cost me anything. There are other options, of course, that you can use, such as pill bottles. Prescription bottles also work very well, but any type of bottle will work. With some tape or poster tack, you can easily make a handle to stick onto the, your mini. You can also get specific painting handles, such as this one from Redgrass Games. Games Workshop also has their own handles as well, but I have not actually tried those ones specifically. In the end, you can really use anything to make a handle for your miniatures. With some tape and some poster tack, you can pretty much make anything work. And I would recommend seeing what works best for you, and especially if you're starting off, again, a plastic cup or Dixie cup can actually go a long way. Now, that out of the way, let's move on to something important you might not think of, lighting. You might actually wonder why lighting matters when painting miniatures. Well, depending on the type of bulb, really, inside of your light fixture, can really determine how well the colors look and how well the end result can be. For instance, if you have a soft white, yellow, or natural light bulb, it can really change the difference on how a miniature looks. Here we have one of my finished miniatures. It's a bowl holder. Three different shots here show a soft white, yellow light, and a natural light. Taking a look at these, you can see that even though it's the same miniature, they all look a little bit different. It's really important to consider the specific color of the bulb that you are using to be your light source. Of course, while in the end it might not matter too much, especially when you're starting off, it is just good to keep in mind that a light that is close to a natural light as you can get will generally give you the best results. Also, something that is bright enough so you can easily see the miniature, working in a dim light that causes lots of shadows on your miniature can also be a little bit more problematic. So, natural light and bright is one of the best ways to go. Now let's move on to some of the big stuff, going with brushes. 
course, if you're going to paint, you're going to need brushes. And to be honest, you don't need anything fancy. Like, seriously, you don't. You can use super cheap paint brushes that come in packages of five or six from any major art store or even just a regular store. There are some world-class painters out there who have won some very, very high-end awards with simply using cheap, disposable brushes. So again, you don't need anything fancy to start off with. We're talking five, six bucks here at most. Even some of the brushes that I have here now are actually relatively cheap and inexpensive. So it's disposable. You don't have to worry about taking care of it too much. It's cheap, so you can get more if you need to. And also you don't have to necessarily worry about having a fancy brush, especially when you're first starting out. Now, over time, I will admit I did get some fancier brushes. These are Raphael brushes that are natural hair, natural bristle. They are relatively nice and fancy, so I do try to take care of them. However, if you want to get just individual brushes on your own, I would suggest a larger, wider one that you can use for base coating and dry brushing, a medium sized brush for some of your, again, base coating and some, some detail work, and finally, a smaller brush that you can use for any small details that you have. A pointed tip generally works a lot better than a flat tip, especially when you're doing any fine detailed work. So I would say round brushes would probably be your best bet. Now on to the last tool to get started with, paint. Okay, obviously you're gonna need paint when you're painting minis, of course. The question really becomes is where do you even start? I would stay away from craft paint as those cheap craft paints have a very different type of pigment in there that does not cover miniatures very well. So I would definitely stick with paint specifically made for miniatures. The box I got started with was Learn to Paint the Core Skills from Reaper Miniatures. And of course it comes with several brushes, paints, and three miniatures to get started on, along with an instruction guide on how to paint those three minis. Now for $35, you really can't go wrong with this, though I cannot recommend any specific other painting sets from other companies as I don't necessarily own them. Now, of course, there are numerous companies out there that do make starter sets such as Games Workshop, Vallejo, and Army Painter. So get what you can, what is available, see what interests you, but of course, in the end, as long as you have some mini paints to start with, you'll be in good shape. Now, you might have noticed I didn't actually cover minis in this video, and there's a reason for that. I'm assuming that if you are getting to start with painting miniatures, you already have miniatures or know where you want to begin. Whether it be a specific game, such as D&D, Warhammer, Malifaux, King of Death, whatever it is, I'm taking a guess that you probably already have some interest in a specific brand or line of miniatures. Now, once you get all those miniatures, then you can get started, hopefully putting them together and painting. Well, I hope that helps you get started. A few basic tools and things you could need and consider for your painting journey. Now, of course, there are some additional tools that you might potentially need in the future, but we'll cover that at a later time as this is generally for beginners. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Is there anything that I missed? Anything that you've tried or interested in trying? Leave a comment down below and we can go back and forth and see what potentially has worked for you. Thanks again for watching. This has been Mediocre Minis and I shall return. Thank you.